Good evening. Tonight you will be seeing a chilling selection of horror collectibles and toys at fair market prices. As well as many non-horror collectibles also at fair market prices. I'm your host, the friendly neighborhood comic book dude. What's going on, guys? I'm here. I'm ready. There's a poster behind me. It's a beautiful Old Man Logan poster with Maestro on it. Guess what? We're changing the rules when it goes to posters. You know, I like to think of it as beta testing since I'm a new YouTuber. So before I was giving you guys these complicated instructions to get your hands on a poster, guess what? Like a video, comment on a video, subscribe. Doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, if you're a brand new subscriber, I will count that. Just send me, you know, I have a list of all the current subscribers, so... Send me a screenshot, you know, when you do that one or the other ones, you know, I'll just see the likes or the subscribes. Um, yeah, send those my way and I will throw them into a randomizer. I want to start getting these posters out to people, man. I, I want you guys to enjoy these lovely things I want to share with you. Hello, Star-Lord. <sighs> Star-Lord's coming in early. Come on. You gotta, you gotta sneak up later like a cameo. Um, but yeah, do any of those things, I will throw them into a randomizer at the start of the next video, and we'll get this into somebody's hands. No fuss, no muss, just enjoyment. What else? Any other fun things? Oh! We're about 18 weeks in here to our, our lovely, you know, um, uh, analysis on collectibles and showcasing of items and things like that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've mentioned several times I want to grow this channel, I want to do other things with it. I've got my first Patreon subscribers, so shout out to you, TJ Gomez. You're going to keep getting those shout outs, and other people will start to get the fire under their butts and say, shoot, all i got to do is a dollar a month to get an early lead on YouTube. You guys, you guys that are sitting here watching lost out on potentially three items this week. It's, it's touch and go, but either way, Patreon subscribers get a 24-hour lead on, on YouTube watchers, so... You know, that might be a, an incentive for you. If you've seen things in the past that you like and you want that heads up, get to it. I got three tiers, but the lowest one is a buck and you get early access. So enough with the plug-in. Let's start a chugging with some stuff. So this first thing, um, in and of itself, doesn't have a lot for me to talk about it with, but um, is a VHS. We haven't done VHSs yet. I, I have anybody who's following me or in the groups that I'm in. I've seen me post Blu-rays. Um, in my years as just a collectible seller on my own, I heard whispers and rumors, and you see the random clickbait posts on Facebook about Disney VHSs being worth, you know, a lot of money. And at a certain point, I started to think to myself, hmm, maybe, maybe there's something to that. And then I came across in the collection a, a box of Disney VHSs. So I took one, just one, so I could, you know, start my, my research aspect of it and see what about these things makes them so special. Um, so we got our hands on a Fantasia here. Um, circa 1994. Um, so one of the things that purportedly makes the ones that are worth something worth something is on the side... Might be a little bit of a glare, so it'll be hard to see. You see this little diamond diamond on the bottom with Mickey on it? Well, on the versions that uh, that are, you know, like, first run, first time they ever came out, you know, copies, have um have another diamond up here. It's a black diamond, and it says the classics in it. Um, this one is a Walt Disney masterpiece, um, and this was the last iteration of this VHS they did. I mean, they're still hard to come by, um, but they're not, like... Boku dollars hard to come by and even then I'm not entirely convinced you know it seems like a lot of back and forth I've seen in terms of why anybody cares that that one is worth more than this one um, I've heard some speculation too and feel free to you know give me some insight on this if you know better I've heard things along the lines of uh, VHS uh, versions of some of these older things have things taken out of them in the restoration process when they were moved to like DVD and uh, Blu-ray and streaming, uh, and these original VHS copies, people can, like, rip the, rip the good copies of these things. I've heard it with this, I've heard it with Star Wars, 
you know, I don't, I have no knowledge if that's true. Maybe it is. Maybe somebody's going to cop a deal on this Fantasia and, you know, have a better version than if they bought it on Blu-ray. Um, came up with the price of $20 on this. I saw a wide and varied amount for it. Um, high end was $26. The low end was a couple of bucks. Um, so seems fair, but you know, we may, be, may even go less on this depending on, uh, what kind of interest we get or don't get. So there be that. What's next? Um, hmm, what is next? <laughs> oh, all right. So in the vein of our, um, we've had some Bowen statues, uh, a couple of them now. We've had two statues come across and a bust. We've got another statue. We're going to have a lot of Bowens for anybody that are fans of those. Uh, it'll probably start to turn into like one a week unless somebody like waylays me and they're like, I want all the Bowens. These things are pricey though, so I'm, I'm tempering my expectations on that happening. Um, and this one might be, you know, pricey for what it is because it's not, not a lesser known character, but you know, if we tier the characters by like A to, A to C or A to D, uh, She's probably in the C or D range. Um, we got ourselves an Enchantress. 12 inches tall, very limited, and she's displayable with a base um, from our friends at Bowen there. Um, and she was out of 650 copies. They did 445. Um, I will full disclose you, this does have its seal broken. Uh, I pulled out the styrofoam. It does look like uh, with most of the open statues that we've sold so far, it's just to ensure that the pieces are not, um, you know, there's no, no breaks, no damage, no reason, you know, to report this thing is busted, um, upon, like, receiving it, so that way somebody doesn't open it 20 years later and then realize, oh crap, this thing was broken, I could've, I could've gotten it replaced, maybe, or my money back, so, um, yeah, Frank was very one or the other. He either displayed it, you know, with no regrets, and then we would find an empty box somewhere later, or he never displayed it. Um, there was really no in-between. Um, it it was never like, hey, I'm going to display this for a while, take it out and put something else. It maybe should have been, but to each their own. Uh, so, yeah, I'm relatively confident in saying that this figure has never actually been displayed. I feel confident calling it new, despite the, the broken seal, but, you know, I leave that to the judge of whoever ends up owning this lovely piece. Uh, next. Let's, oh, you probably wanted to know what, uh, what that was going to cost. Um, $250 is what the Enchantress is going to go for, man. I, I can't continue to stress enough, the lower those, like, quantities of creation were the higher the price that's why like the 5200 uh editions on dc which are still pretty limited run like 100 to 150 instead of 250 because still a little bit more amount there um where is uh next piece from our friends at NECA real toys before they got real ultimate with their stuff. Get ourselves a Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors Freddy, complete with all the accoutrements, extra heads, extra chests, all that fun stuff, little little guys, you know. Cute piece, you know, especially for you you fans of these NECA real toys. Um price range on this guy went between 15 and 45 so that is a cool 30 bucks for whoever decides they want this bad boy next in line with that because you know i totally planned it this way i actually did it uh I, I figured this out uh when i was doing the research on this stuff uh this week uh we also got ourselves a Friday the 13th Part 3 Jason. Um, I didn't tell, like I said, I didn't intend to take Part 3s on both. It just happened. 
Um, you know, another one of our NECA Real Toy Boys. Um, great for any collector of Jason who's got to have them all. You know, Jason but Pokemon, but, but Jason. In that, you know, classic NECA packaging. Um, another one that's not going to really rock the boat. He was between 20 and 52 so 35 bucks is what he's gonna live at. I have to I have to think that a lot of these prices are either fair or right about what people were expecting them to be at retail because week after week I, I show you guys these things and they don't they don't usually last. So someone out there thinks they're reasonable. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Um, mm, 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 mm. Man, so many things to choose from. Oof, this piece. Oh, oh man. All right, so this next piece is from our friends at Spencer's, who, you know, as we've learned several times, um, dipped their toes into, like, their own imprints, like, making, you know, those, like, random 18-inch dolls that, like, were Spencer's brand. Well, this next thing, you know, licensed characters, but it was Spencer's brand, essentially. It was, the brand was called SGPD, Spencer's Gift Product Development, um, and or it was also just, like, called Spencer's, uh, so, uh, this piece is beautiful, though, um, I, it's the type of thing, this is one of the things that I would want to keep, um, if the, the price was not cost prohibitive. But this is a Universal Studios Monster Chess Set. Oh, man, this is so cool. Um, oh. I don't know how well you guys can see with the glare, but... Oh, man. I, I, I'm, I actually got probably the best view in back. The back has got the pictures of every single piece that you get, you know. Most of your big ones are represented. You got your... Your brides, you got your, well, your brides of the mummy, and the Frankenstein, anyway, you got mummy, you got Frank, you got Drac, you got creature, uh, you got a bunch of, like, Egyptian and tombstone -y things to represent your pawns, um, I would argue they probably could have come up with some ancillary characters, but I, I recognize that, you know, that might have cost more. Um, <laughs> I had a debate with somebody about this earlier today, and, um, they felt that it was a little silly that, uh, Frankenstein managed to outrank Dracula. Frankenstein was was the king, but Dracula was a was a bishop. And his his argument was, you know, they could have used Bride of Dracula. But uh, for most lay horror fans, Bride of Frankenstein stands out more than Dracula. You know, if you watch Hammer films or you watch the Universal stuff, yeah, you you know there are brides and daughters of Dracula, but. I don't know, something about the, the big hair and the skunk stripe and all that just stands out in pop culture. She she had to be there as the queen, which means she had to have her king. Um, yeah, so this thing is, you know, long gone. I don't even know when this came out. Yeah, there was, there was no date on this when I looked the first time either. Um, this... This is another pricey piece. I'm hitting you guys with all the big stuff. It, it's probably going to get close. You know, I feel like week after week I try to like get a mix of things that I know are not too crazy valuable and, and then and things that I know are going to be pricey. And it Sometimes I can't predict it, but uh, that thing is also $250, like our Enchantress. Um, but yeah, then there's the weeks where I can't predict them, like uh, the screen grabs. Two weeks in a row, those things... Uh, Jason screen grab just sold for two hundred and five dollars. Pretty sure that was more than we were asking on Facebook before that moved over to eBay. But oh man, I I couldn't have predicted that. I was like, what what what? Ah. So oh, what's next? Oh, and then and then something like this, which shocks me because then I see the price for this and I'm like, why is this not more? Let's see here. Oh, she's down here somewhere. So, for all my Star Wars fans out there... Ooh, did her head peek out? Yep, she peeked out. 
for all my Star Wars fans out there, you know, anybody that has any sort of attraction to uh, females in cinema um, will remember, you know, and is also a nerd, will remember the, like, Leia Organa as Jabba's prisoner outfit. And, uh, yeah, she's represented in this beautiful piece from Hasbro. Um, it's called, and she's from the Princess Leia collection. I just love how this box looks. I mean, these are, I don't know if you, you can, you might not be able to tell, but they're like popping out at you, kind of like a, a pop-up book. And then she comes with R2 also. Um, I mean, this looks like a high quality piece. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's Hasbro, so there's a ton of them out there or what, but, um, whoever wants this is getting it for 40 bucks. All right. You know, something that's five bucks away from that Jason that I just showed you guys, but this big and this quality and you know, I, I don't know uh, next another into our foray with our friends at McFarlane figure after figure I look at these things I still don't have an answer as to why they don't go for more um, I'm sure nobody's complaining the, the people that are out there interested in these these pieces you know, they're probably happy that they're scoring figures for, like, 30 bucks that are from when they were in diapers and couldn't collect stuff. <laughs> or they were just at points in their lives where they weren't picking up things. And it's like, wow, I'm paying pretty close to what I would have paid for when this thing came out. Like, little to no appreciation and value versus maybe other things in the same vein that would be tons more. But uh, we got our boy here, Pumpkinhead. Oh, man, I always loved it, these movies. It's just one of those, like, senseless monsters... You know, no, no real rhyme or reason. I mean, even if there is a reason, like it just was, just cool to see like a Halloween monster doing his thing without, you know, lots of exposition. Just let him do his thing. Give me ninety minutes of him doing his thing, or her. <laughs> um, this is from nineteen ninety eight. So, tw uh, nope, ninety nine. Twenty one years ago. Guess on a price. Come on, I'll give you five seconds. Thirty-two dollars. Thirty-two. So if uh, pumpkin head is who you seek, thirty-two dollars is all you need. No. Um. Ah. Uh, next. Next. This was kind of cool to find. It sort of dated the figure a little. Um. You know, all the time I show you guys if that's NECA Real Toys. Um, well, it looks like at some point Real Toys and NECA weren't the same thing, or maybe Real Toys became NECA. Real Toys was absorbed by NECA. Could could be a lot of things. Um, but at whatever the case might be, this was a figure from a period when NECA and Real Toys were not affiliated. Their boy Vincent Price here is the Raven, or from the Raven, as it were. Um, it's cool looking, pretty, pretty spot on likeness. Uh, the movie poster art in the back is always appreciated. Um, uh, price wise, we'd be looking at seventy five for him. Um, that seems fair. Seems like a fair price for, uh, you know, early NECA stuff. Uh, I mean, even in this day and age, I feel like a twelve inch figure like this would probably be like sixty. 60 to 80 retail, so it's probably not even a stretch from what he what he was at retail. He probably was at, it was probably like 40 or 50 bucks when he came out, because that would have been like relatively equivalent at the time. So, yep. Mm, oh, 2002. Ooh, well, it actually does say neck on the bottom, but it's like they go out of their way to like specify that it's Real Toys logo is a trademark of NECA. But yeah, this like design is super different than anything else they've seen with Real Toys on it. So. Alright, what else? Well, these two, these two gotta go together. This is just like, this, you know, I mean obviously I'll sell them separately, but, you know, these should go together just, just by nature of what they are. Um couple weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago, we had uh, Frank Black from the X-Files, uh, Sideshow figure. Well, you knew they were coming. Mulder and Scully. There's also one more figure. It looks like we got to find it at some point. CGB Spender. 
haven't seen them yet, but you know, you never know. Um, I don't think these things have ever been open opened, but the stickers that are used on the top to seal them up have definitely like unperforated and like are like hanging up like by a thread. Um, so for that, I have to consider them opened. Um, that being said, um, either way, these weren't going for like a ton of money. Um, money wise, um, uh, Mulder was a little more. Mulder was 50, Scully was 35. Uh, I'll give you guys a peek inside too, just so you can like get a better look at their insides. A little Scully action. And this is them in their suits. Um, somebody mentioned to me that there might be a version of these where they're like in other outfits, but this this is the real McCoy. So, but yeah, Mulder's looking like fifty bucks, and Scully's looking like thirty-five. So, I mean, if these end up going as a pair, I'll probably give somebody a break on the price. I'm not gonna name a number, but I'm thinking one. What is next? Ah, so this next piece I have I have very little knowledge about. Um, um, you know, for anybody you know watching this who doesn't know me, which you know some of you do, many of you don't. I am part Asian. I actually, the the split for my trying my pie goes twenty five percent Japanese, half Pakistani, and the bottom quarter is. Irish and German. So, but I'm, I'm bad. I, I never learned my Japanese. My grandma chastises me for it from time to time. Um, and, you know, I did a little bit of research on this, and I really didn't find much. Uh, truthfully, it looks like a, a, a generic um, <laughs> anime schoolgirl-looking figure. Um, you know, then again, maybe it, it, it is from something. I would think that they would go out of their way to tell you if it was, but... Uh, if any, what they really do is they go out of their way to showcase who the artist was, uh, whose name was Shinya Yamashita, but this is Shi Arisugawa, um, and she's, you know, uh, a teasing, you know, anime schoolgirl. Uh, the art on the back is definitely riskier, and the art on the side, um... Uh, you know, it's a one seven scale. It's artifacts Kota Bukaya. You know, um, it actually looks like they already have her all put together for you too. So she's not even like a like a full blown. She's not like a build a model. She's like a figure. Um, price wise, I saw her going low sixty two, high was two hundred. So there must be interest for her out there somewhere. I'm not sure what uh, again what she's from that people would know to look for her, but. Uh, price we're looking at is 130 for she. She is not a cheap date. Uh. Oof. Alright. The next set uh, is a six-figure set. Um, I did eventually come up with individual prices for them. Um, I think what I'm going to do in the video is I'm going to give you guys with the set prices, and then if you follow the links in the description for where you can actually buy these things um you can see the individual prices you know obviously i'm giving a break on the set price if somebody wants to buy the individual pieces you know you're breaking up a set so i can't i can't do you a favor and give you a discount on that when you make it so that i can't guarantee the other figures will sell but um these are from our friends at NECA also they're very they're a very different breed of NECA than I've seen before. Um, it almost looks like they were, this is what they were preparing for with some of the ultimate figures. Uh, these boxes are akin to it. They're seven inch figures. Uh, you know, they came with accessories and stuff, but they just, <clears throat> they hadn't quite gotten to the level yet where they wanted to call them ultimate, I don't think. Yeah, they were 2014. I want to say the ultimates were in the last, like, three years. Maybe four. Um... They're transitionary, though. But these are from the original Planet of the Apes movies. Uh, there was Series 1 and Series 2 that I can see. I don't know if there was more than that. But Series 1 uh, includes... What do we got? Cornelius. Uh, a gorilla soldier that was like the generic one chasing around the uh, 
you know, humans on, like, when they were on the horses chasing the humans, and a, a Dr. Zayas. Um, and then from there, Series 2, which is also three figures, so I've got Series 1 and Series 2, you know, the set price is for all six figures. Um, Series 2 has, we got, we got Zira, we got... General Ursus. And we got another Dr. Zayas, because apparently one wasn't enough. This is version 2. Uh, so he comes with different swag. Uh, grab the other one, see if he like, looks drastically different. You know, put them side by side for you. You know, they're not the same guy. Uh, and they complete both the sets. Sorry for anybody who's like, I really only need one Dr. Zayas. Um, all six figures will run you $125. So that's like just north of twenty per per figure. I have to imagine these were twenty five dollar figures. So sounds like a deal where I come from. Um, but yep, uh, all six. All right. Next, um, this one will also kind of be a steal for whoever gets their hands on it, because I I just can't in good conscience like ask for a ton of money for something that. Is looking kind of rough. Um, Alright, so we got ourselves a Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 2. Um, you know, overall, I'm sure this book is fine. Um, but, it's got a nice little rip in the cellophane down there. And somebody might say initially, oh, well, you know, no big deal. It looks like dust got in. It looks like there's random clumps of dust through the thing. Um, I can't very well ask full price on something that's that's got dust in it. Um, and, you know, could, could in fact affect the value of the item. Um, now, I mean, this was pricey. Um, the low on it used was 100... <gasps> excuse me, $116. The high was $250. i am going to give it to whoever wants it for $50. Bucks. Again, and just just seeing that stuff, I, I can't justify it. I can't justify asking more than that. I can't go lower than that, but 50 bucks is what I am allowed to offer for that. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's a great one. It's got, uh, Fantastic Four, what, 31 to 60, and the first, uh, not three, uh, the second, third, and fourth annuals, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, looks like early in humans appearances, we got, you know, first Galactus, I think for a Silver Surfer. I mean, there's a lot of decent stuff in this one. There's a, there's a reason why it's pricey. But, you know, it's going to be a reader copy for whoever buys it. Uh, again, it might not even be that bad. The, the dust and the clumps of dirt and whatever might be get offable. I mean, I literally only saw one tear down here. So it just, like, over years must have just, like, absorbed stuff. So, 50 bucks. Um, and you get some great Fantastic Four reading. Uh, oh, our next piece, our next lot, is a Marvel Select Spider-Man, um, who, while looking at him, at least from the front, can't really tell, but he is Ultimate Spider-Man, so the universe that Miles Morales comes from, he's the Peter Parker that ends up dying so Miles can get his, can get powers and then become Spider-Man. Um, it becomes more clear when you flip it to the back and you can see, oh hey, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Not included in the box. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool looking Spider-Man figure. You know, back to basics type Spidey. Uh, nice little scenery to go with him. Uh, Marvel Select was always good about that. Giving you, like, pieces to do stuff with your figure instead of just the figure. Um, I What am I looking at? We're looking at 30 bucks for this thing, which is probably close to what it was when it came out. You know, I don't know what kind of scarcity there is in Marvel Selects, but uh, this is about normal. Alright, next. Ooh, this next one will intrigue some people. Alright. Can you see his cloak? Can you? Well, there he is. It's the Moon Knight. It's a Moon Knight bust. Seven inches, 
uh, ten year anniversary general giant figure, well, bust. Limited edition. He was. We got number wise. He's number three fifty eight out of six hundred. So just over half. Not very many. Um. Oh man. Unboxing. All right. So he is sliced open. So he is technically open. Um. With our lovely full disclosure. But yeah, beautiful piece. I honestly don't think anybody would want to keep this thing not open. I mean, this is cool. This should be displayed. It wasn't displayed, but it should be by whoever gets it. Um, surprisingly, though, I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's a bust and it's not a full statue. Um, I mean, this isn't running for the same number as our 650-piece Enchantress uh, who got us. Well, actually, <laughs> it's probably a relative amount. He's going for about half of what, what our Enchantress is going for. Uh... The Moon Knight is going to go for 115 um, which, you know, he's missing legs. He's torsoing up. Uh, but, yeah, so interesting piece. He's like the like the big statue I shared with you guys, but he's a little bit more of an updated version. You know, this is like the like the 2010s era Moon Knight. Uh, they saw him on, like, Secret Avengers and, and uh, New Avengers and things like that. Uh, they developed a lot of the newer stuff about him, like, uh, the stuff with, like, the split personality stuff, a little bit deeper with the Egyptian Khonshu stuff, so, um, you know, at his height there, I mean, he's appeared in stuff over the years since, but I think a lot of that is the type of stuff that put him on the map. I mean, I've read some of the Moon Knight stuff from, like, 2015 and up, and it was cool stuff, but I don't think it was the things that made him famous. Mm. <laughs> Slowly coming to the end. We got another one of our lovely DC Direct. Well, actually, not another one of our DC Direct. I didn't grab a DC Direct figure this week. This is a DC Cover Girl. So this is in the vein of our Catwoman that we had last week or the week before, something like that. Still have her. Okay, I'm gonna check into her. Um, but yeah, we got our Zatanna here. Cool piece. Let's see, is she sealed or is she open? She is open. She is number nine fifty one of five thousand. Cool piece. She sits at about what is that? Ten point two inches high. That extra two inches is all box. They're such liars. Twelve inch figure, my foot. Well, actually, they don't go out of their way to tell you what it is. But yeah, it's a lovely art germ Lau piece. Has become famous over recent comic covers. Get some art germ Lau covers if you get a chance. Good stuff. Ugh. Next. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. What shall I show you next? We got one more expensive two hundred and fifty dollar piece. You know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a night if we didn't have three. Oh. Oh, this is an interesting piece. It's beautiful too. It's from Diamond Select Toys, but I get the sense that it was relatively limited. I don't think this was. Especially considering the price. Uh, this was a motion globe. Um, it makes me think of a snow globe, but not not 100%. So instead of like snowflakes on the inside, it's got spiders that move around. You know, anybody out there who's like, eek, spiders, probably isn't going to want this. Uh, but it's a 6-inch diameter globe. Ah, oh, there we go. Sculpted by Sam Greenwell and limited to 2,500 pieces. So this is one of 2,500. So the top does not have a seal, but the figure itself is in fact still sealed. So you will be the first person to open and enjoy this piece, 100% new, except for this top flap, which doesn't look like it ever had a seal on it, so it's as new as it possibly could be. Um, yeah, uh, The range on this thing was between 150 and 350, so... 250 guys. I think the 150 was pre owned too, so brand new. 
and my last piece. You know, sometimes it's good to go out on a not quite a bang, but a maybe a flash or a flash and a kid flash. This is sort of our in lieu of a DC Direct this week. I saw this. There's actually a stack of figures in this collection, which are probably the rest of these that are the ones in the back of it. Uh, but these are really cool. They're like action figure, two-pack, three-pack type things. Um, unfortunately, they aren't that pricey. Well, unfortunately for us, not for you. Um, so you get Flash. You get Kid Flash. You get the Cosmic Treadmill. You get a bonus Flash ring that when you pop it open has the collapsible suit in it which is really just a piece of plastic, but it signifies the collapsible suit. All for $35. Seems good. I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if this is just because they've like made newer figures from you know different things now. I mean, this is DC Direct, and it's 20 years old. So, but that is our show, ladies and gents. So... If you're interested in any of these things, check the links. We've got a I've got a Facebook group at this point that I that I run that everything besides, you know, Patreon. That's where once we do our YouTube video, that's where everything goes. You can go there, check them out. You know, I post to other groups too, but other groups have their own rules and own moderators and things and it's very easy for me to just copy, paste, put into my group. Um, it's harder to go through other groups and be like, oh, I can't post that, I can't post that. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're ever 100% want to be on the front lines, Patreon is the way to go. And if you're not quite ready to spend a dollar a month just for a YouTube channel that you watch for random collectibles, for, I'm not worth 25 cents a week, <laughs> you can always just, uh, hop on one of the Facebook groups and uh, check me out there. Um, until next time, I will see you guys later.